Let me show you how I rescue this unexposed image using nothing more than Lightroom. As always, feel free to follow along this tutorial by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now, let's jump into it. Right away, if you're working with an unexposed image like this, you don't want to introduce any noise. So the first thing we want to do is to head into the details panel and we want to apply some AID noise. Therefore, just click on that button right here. Lightroom will do all the work for us. All we need to do is click on that enhance button and Lightroom will create this new image for us, which is basically noise free. From this point on, we can start with basic adjustments. So let's open up the basic panel. I want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape to bring up the base saturation of the image. And then let's start recovering details from the darkest areas of the image. I'm going to start by raising the exposure quite a bit. And since we have applied the AID noise, we have way more flexibility with these settings right here. As you can see, I can push the exposure a lot without introducing any noise. So that's perfect for this purpose. Of course, we are still missing a little bit of details in the darker areas of the image. Therefore, we can use the shadows and the blacks sliders to recover more detail. So next up, let's raise the shadows. This helps quite a bit. I'm also going to raise the blacks a lot. So let's go with something like this. All right, that looks much, much better. And again, you can see it's noise free. Now, due to these adjustments, we might lose a little bit of contrast, but of course we can change that. What I'm going to do for that is to bring up the whites. Just be careful to not introduce any clipping in the brightest parts of the image. Therefore, just take a look at histogram while adjusting the whites slider. At the same time, I want to bring down the highlights just to save some of these details in the brighter clouds in the sky. I don't want to lose them, but that's looking pretty solid. Now that we actually can see a few things in this image, it's time to adjust the white balance. I want to make this look a little bit warmer, so I'm going to bring up the temperature, introducing more of that nice golden hour light. And let's also bring up the vibrance, pushing the colors a little further. Then I want this image to look a bit sharper. I'm going to bring up the texture for that. At the same time, I want to have a nice subtle glow over the whole image. So let's bring down the clarity very gently as well as the dehaze. Perfect. And there we have the image after the basic adjustments. Let's compare to before to see the huge transformation already with just a bunch of very, very simple changes. Looks much better. But one thing we can see is because I was using a wide angle lens, this chapel is slightly distorted. I wanna change that. So before we start with the masking, let's head into the transform panel here. I'm going to make use of the vertical slider and I'm going to drop it. And as I drop it, you can see how we can nicely straighten those vertical lines of the chapel, making it look much, much better this way. All right, that's about it. I'm also going to bring down the Y offset so we can get back some of that sky from above like this. Also, we can crop the image. So I'm taking away a bit from each side. I do wanna leave these gaps in so I can leave the chapel at this height for a rule of thirds composition. I'm going to fill those gaps later with a little bit of Photoshop. But that's looking much better. Now we can focus on a few areas locally with a bit of masking. Let's open up the masking panel and I want to start working on the sky first. I'm going to use a color range mask right here. And with that color range mask, I'm going to target the blue tones of the sky like that. Works perfectly. Of course, I only want to affect the sky. To be more precise, I want to affect the top part of the sky. So I'm going to subtract a linear gradient removing all the bottom part of this color range mask. And what I want to do in here is to carefully bring down the exposure. I'm also going to crank up the contrast. So we will make those bright orange clouds stand out in front of that blue sky. I'm also going to pull down the blacks for the same effect. We could introduce a little more temperature, adjusting the blue tones of the sky this way. And I want to bring down the saturation very slightly. And that's about it. Looks much better already, but we can continue using another sky mask. And what I want to do with that is to bring up the overall saturation for the sky. 
and I want to introduce a little bit of clarity, which will make the clouds pop a little more. I just want to be careful here because increasing the clarity kind of reduces the overall saturation as well. So that looks good. Of course, we can also work on the foreground. So I'm going to start with yet another sky selection. This time, since we want to work on the foreground, I'm going to click that invert checkbox and you can see we get a perfect selection for the foreground. Let's brighten it up a little bit, increasing the exposure first. And let's also bring up the whites. I'm going to bring down the temperature to adjust the colors slightly. I'm also going to increase the tint like this, but I think that's looking good. Then let me use a linear gradient with which I'm going to target the very near foreground right in front of the camera because I want to create some kind of vignetting effect. That means I'm going to make this bottom part a bit darker by simply pulling down the exposure. This helps guiding the viewer's eye more towards the center here. Let's bring it down like this. Okay, I do think I want to further work on the sky. Let me use another sky selection. This time I want to work on the bottom part. So that means I'm going to subtract the top with a linear gradient. Let's go with something like this. I want to make the bottom part a little bit brighter. So I'm going to bring up the blacks. Increasing the blacks will help make it brighter without risking overexposure. So that's great. I'm also going to slightly bump up the temperature, introducing some more warmth. And I'm even going to add a specific color tone by clicking on this little box right here. And I'm going to choose a warm hue like this. And let's bring up the saturation a notch. Okay, that's looking good. At this point, I do want to add a little bit of glow. Therefore, I'm using a radial gradient. And I'm going to create it over the brightest area of the sky. And I'm making sure it's overlapping parts of the chapel and the foreground. So the glow effect becomes more visible this way. In here for the glow, I'm going to bring up the blacks. I'm also going to drop the dehaze. And then if you want, we can introduce some color to the glow by bringing up the temperature. All right, lovely. I also want to make the other side of the chapel in the sky just a bit brighter. So let me use another radial gradient. This time I only want to affect the sky. So I'm going to click on those three dots of this mask right here. Choose intersect mask width and choose select sky. Then what I'm going to do is to bring up the exposure first. I'm also going to bring up the whites a little bit. And the temperature. Wonderful. I also want to target the subject. Therefore, we can use a simple select subject mask. Now, since I want to make it brighter, I kind of don't want to risk any overexposure in that window. So I'm going to subtract the, an objects mask. I'm making sure to activate the rectangle select mode and I'm drawing a rectangle around that window right here to get rid of it. Perfect. Then what I'm going to do to make it brighter is to increase the shadows. I'm going to increase the whites. Let's also increase the blacks. And I want to add a bit of texture and clarity. Okay, I further want to work on the subject. This time, let me create an objects mask on its own. I'm going to target the chapel's tower right here. I don't want to change the whole tower, but just the part that gets hit by the light on the right side. So I'm going to subject the linear gradient with a very harsh edge just like that. Let me bring up the exposure in here. And I also want this area to have a slight golden look on it. Um, so for that, let's bring up the temperature. Wonderful. And finally, let me add some highlights in the foreground. I'm going to use a radial gradient for that, drawing a rough circle right here, which I'm going to place right in the center. I just want to affect the grass. So I'm going to subtract the subject mask. And I also don't want to target the sky, so I'm going to subtract a sky mask. In here, I'm going to start by increasing the exposure. I'm also bringing up the whites. And let's add texture and clarity. Perfect. So that's it for the masking adjustments. Let me show you the difference from before to after. 
looking much much better especially with the darker sky and the brighter subject. Now we can focus a little more on the color grading aspect since we have successfully recovered the underexposed parts of this image. So let's go ahead open up the color mixer. I want to work on the hue for a moment. I'm going to bring down the yellow hue because I want the yellow tones of this image to look a little more orange-ish. I'm also going to bring down the green hue just a little bit, making the grass a little more yellow this way. And I'm going to bring up the blue tones just a bit, which will give us a deeper blue in the sky. For the saturation, I want to bring up uh, the orange saturation for the sunset tones. At the same time, I want to bring down the yellow color because this will affect the foreground. And I'm going to slightly bump up the blue saturation. Let's also bring down green just for the foreground. All right, nice. We can also work on the luminance for a moment. I can bring down the blue luminance, which will make the blue tones of the sky darker. And thus we're getting more contrast in here. I could also bring down the orange luminance just a little bit, making the clouds slightly darker. And I could bring up the yellow luminance, giving the sky some more punch. Okay, then let's then let's do a little bit of split toning in the color grading panel. As always, I'm starting with the highlights, and as always, for images like this, we want the highlights to be nice and warm. So let me set up the hue to something like this. And depending on what you like, you can really push the saturation here, creating a very stylized image like this. I think it's a bit too much this way. I'm going to tone it down. Let's go with something like this. Nice. Then let's head over into the midtones. I'm going to use another warm color tone for the midtones somewhere in the orange color range. And I'm going to slightly bump up the saturation. Perfect. Then for the shadows, we want to keep a bit of color contrast in this image. So I'm going to set up the hue to a cold color tone and very gently raise the saturation. And that's it for the split toning. Finally, let's open up the calibration panel and I'm going to bring down the blue primary hue, which will change the colors of the image in a very, very nice way, as you can see. And I'm going to bring up the saturation. All right, that's looking awesome. Now, the only thing left to do in Lightroom is the sharpening in the details panel. Let's do this. Bring down the radius, increase the details all the way up. Add a bit of masking while holding on Alt key. So as you can see, we can nicely target the chapel for the sharpening. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening and we are done. Now, the only thing left to do is to fill those gaps. And I'm going to do that in Photoshop. Let me show you how it's done real quick. I'm going to right click on the image in the film strip down below. Go to edit in and choose open as smart object in Photoshop. I'm going to duplicate that layer by hitting Ctrl J. Then we want to rasterize this layer, right clicking on it and choose rasterize layer. Now to fill those gaps, I'm going to use the lasso tool and I'm going to create a very rough selection. I'm going to make this on both sides. And I'm going to hit Shift F5, under contents, choose content aware and hit OK. That looks perfect. So there we have the finished image. With only simple Lightroom tricks, we can rescue heavily underexposed images like this. And it's not even that hard. I hope this will be helpful for your future images. If you want to support this channel, feel free to subscribe. This would mean a lot to me. And thank you so much for watching this video.